there's no Project Veritas without James O'Keefe. And my feeling was, even if it's all true, the solution to this is to remedy whatever has gone wrong and find a way to save the company because there is no Project Veritas without you. You you are the person we trust on the reporting. And even if all of it is true, what does it tell us? You're a flawed man who needs to shore up some areas and do better. But how does the company go on without the man who built it, who conceived of it, who built it? I know a lot of people feel just as I did. Well, what were your thoughts when they were accusing you of such things? I mean, I, I I have a lot of thoughts. They 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 made some bizarre allegations about I take black cars around to meetings. Uh, I take I have too many meetings. I was raising uh, 20, 25 million a year, responsible for much of the revenue, and I was working as hard as I possibly could while also being the on camera talent and the chief executive officer. It was it was truly bizarre. Um, I think it's indicative of the times that we live in. Uh, perhaps people feel very entitled. They're perhaps uh, 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 envious, or they want to tear down excellence and and hard work. I, I it, it was very bizarre, Megan. Uh, and I I gave a forty five minute um, speech, which I can you know, which when I left when I left when I was terminated, um, that that have all my thoughts in it. Uh, I learned a lot of things, Megan, about human nature, about good versus evil. It was very painful. It was very, yeah. very, very painful. Sure. Um, because I spent 15 years building this thing and building the credibility of this thing. And I've always tried to do the right thing. I think it's getting harder in our world to do the right thing. Um, and I, I learned a lot about board management. Frankly, I never paid attention to who was on my board. I know that Fox has a board. You should look at who's on their board. It's very interesting. Private equity funds and so forth and so on. And in terms of media ownership, I, I I was the CEO and chairman of a nonprofit, but a nonprofit is not owned. It's not owned by me. It's a, it's the board of directors. And I never really paid much attention to that part of it. Lesson learned. I'll do a better job now. And OMG, the organization I founded doesn't even have a board. No, um, I, think I have as a no board either. I'm the board. Good. As a journalist, I've always tried to do the right thing. And, and to operate without, as they say, without fear or favor. I, I never make decisions based upon economics, which is very rare. Because if you're an investigative reporter, sometimes I've, I spent a million dollars to do a story, and I didn't really care. I just wanted to get the story. That was my model. I, I Whatever I got to do to get this story, however much it costs, I'm gonna, it's philanthropic. So I was working as hard as I possibly could. Um, I think they made a statement about I took a helicopter ride and stuff like that. Well, when you're running around having seven meetings a day <laughs> and you're trying to raise $100,000 a day to keep the lights on, to, to pay your 70 employees. So it didn't really make any sense. The timing of it was right after a, a Pfizer story. The only thing about me that was different, I'm the same guy I've been for 15 years, perhaps less intense than I used to be, as I learned how to be an executive and learned how to how to deal with people, which is not an easy thing to do, by the way, if you're a leader. Um the only thing that changed in, in 14 years of doing that was we broke a story on Pfizer. And then four days later, this all happened. So it was the, the timing was very, very bizarre. I could say a lot more about it, but I, I, I would say mostly what I've learned, it's a spiritual journey and it's a fight of good versus evil now. Um, as people like me and anybody, anybody who challenges those in power um, are under attack you know, on land, air, and sea. Mm. I did look this up earlier, just to answer your question. The Fox Board of Directors is made up of Rupert Murdoch, chairman, Lachlan Murdoch, executive chairman and CEO, William Burke, who uh, looks like co-managing partner of the law firm Quinn Emanuel, Chase Carey, he's been at Fox forever, he's an internal guy, and Diaz, who is founder and chief executive officer of Aragon Global Management and Investment Group, focused on global mm -hmm. media, Roland Hernandez, who is the funding principal and CEO of Hernandez Media Ventures, a company engaged in the acquisition and management of media assets. Again, so another, this is a big money group. Jacques Nasser, uh, who is, he's from pri private equity, advisor to the private equity firm, One Equity Partners, LLP. And then Paul Ryan. And everybody knows who he was, former Speaker so, of the House. So are any of those people And now journalists? he's with private equity. Are any no. of those institutions or individuals? I mean, the Murdochs. They have a, okay. I don't know about the others. But, um, you, I mean, I, I learned early on in my career that I had to be, in order for me to do what I do, I have to effectively 
be the final decision maker. Um, and, and as you, and as you, and this is a very important point, the deeper I go, the deeper we go, I mean, we're gonna have some powerful people here, like the Pentagon and, 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 uh, Pfizer and Google. Yeah, I just broke a story around. this morning about the department of justice, uh, the prison system. Um, there is no area that I won't go. Uh, the FBI raided me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've had a whistleblower in the FBI. I have more coming out on that probably tomorrow. And just but, as an aside, like, we had Matt Taibbi on the other day. He got... He got served by the F, by the IRS during his congressional t- testimony, um, and now he's being threatened with jail time for allegedly lying to Congress about his Twitter file. I mean, so it's not just you. This is a pattern. But Keep it going. wasn't Tucker's, the subjects of his inquiry and investigation that hurt Tucker. It was Tucker's own colleagues. It was Tucker's bosses. It was Tucker's associates that made the decision to remove Tucker, not yep. whoever he was talking about on his show. So my point is, is well, the we deeper think. that we, we go. We certainly think. I mean, I will say there was a report that both Murdochs I just mentioned had a conference call with Zelensky. And of course, Tucker was not a supporter of the war in Ukraine um, or of our involvement on behalf of Ukraine and the, the funding. And um, But the reports are that there was no evidence whatsoever that they even discussed Tucker Carlson. But I mean, certainly there are people out there who believe that maybe Zelensky pushed but for it. Nevertheless, that, that, that may be, that even if that's true, nevertheless, it's the people around you that have to be very strong if you're going to do this. And, and, it, and it reveals the strength or weakness in other people when you do this. And the deeper that you go and the more effective that you are, let's say you're completely ethical, even if you, you tr- do everything right. But if, but, if, but if the pressure from the outside forces is so great, it'll make an otherwise decent person crack under the pressure. I mean, when you have the most powerful, I mean, Zelensky is a powerful guy. I mean, right. I mean, the, the, the things that Tucker, he's, he's effective. He was probably the most effective individual in media. Um, it makes people around you crack under that pressure. And therefore you have to surround yourself with incredibly strong people, both loyal to you and also loyal to the cause such that when you have the whole world coming down on you, you don't, you don't, you you don't betray, for lack of a better word, your colleagues because it's easier for you to betray your colleagues than do the right thing. This is a little mm-hmm. difficult thing for me to explain, but it's something that I've learned in the last year and a half that we have to find strong people who are courageous, and, we're, and it's going to get worse. Um, or the easier thing is just don't tell the truth. Just don't do, don't do the story. Go along to get along. Look. You did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and you pulled your business through the pandemic. Now, doing that tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. It's not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. It's like an allotment of money that's already there, sitting there. The program is complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and then share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, including those who took PPP loans, even if you had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.